Right, let's talk about social conditioning. Let's see, put the hat on first to fly the flag. If you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, if you find a complete waste of time, give it a thumbs down. Let's talk about social conditioning. Social conditioning, what does social conditioning even mean? I'll give you a little story. I remember in 1999, the Tour Down Under came to Adelaide. This is before, so before social media really existed. And I remember we were going up this basket range road and there's this professional cyclists like Tour de France riders, Tim Lamprey. And they were coming down the road. It was the first time I'd ever seen Tour de France riders in real life. And they were pink and blue and they had the Colnagos and the Duras and then this big train just whoosh, coming down the climb. It's just like, wow. You know, the first time you ever see professional level riders, I don't, I don't mean like you know, amateur or local riders, I mean like the, the guys that do the Tour de France, there's, there's something next level about that. The energy that, and that's the first time I've seen that. It's like a virgin to seeing that. And then they came down, and then it was the bottom of the hill, and then they came back up. And uh, they, came, they came past, not too fast. But I was like, to my mate Jane, I was like, let's, 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 let's get on. He's like, no, 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 let, let them be, like, let them do their training. And I was be like, oh, who made that rule, you know? Um, but I respected my mate Jade a lot. He was got me into cycling, racing back then and stuff like that. Uh, sure, we got each other into racing, but he gave me a lot of tips. So I, I really valued his opinion. So I didn't get, get on the back of the log prey. But I remember, you know, having that belief for a few years. I'd see the pros and I'd like, oh, just let them be, let them be. And then in 2003, I was out with Tim Onse. So I, I believe the social conditioning rule, pro cyclists, leave them alone, you know, let them do their thing, which is, there's got a bit of validity into there. But if you're sitting on the back, it's fine. It's, you're not in anyone's way. Going to the front, <laughs> causing a crash. That's a different story. If you sit on the back, it's all good. I don't care. And uh, especially if you can tell them where to go give them some tips and hints on the local stuff. So anyway, in 2003, I remember I caught up with a team called Team Onse. And I was, I'd done like a 100k ride that morning and there's Neil Stevens there and Manalo Says and uh, there was uh, Rodriguez was there, uh, Alan Davis, you know, a lot of the, the big hitters back in the day. And I remember uh, they caught up to me somewhere and said, hey, do you know how to get to Gorge Road or wherever it was? And I'm like, yeah, and they're like, can you, do you mind if you like jump on the back and just show us where to go? And I was like, uh, I don't know. And they're like, what? Like, just, I had this little freeze frame for a moment because my social conditioning was like, no, leave the pros alone. So I sort of said no. And about half a second later, I said, no, yeah, I can do that. And I was like, what did I even say no? Like, wh whose rules was I listening to? I was listening to my friend Jane's rules. He was a great guy. He gave us a lot of great information. But he was listening to someone else's rules. You know, so be careful who's, what social conditioning you learn, you, you, you live by. And so fast forward 16 years, every two and under, I'm known as a bit of an unofficial tour guide for all the teams, all the riders now, watch my YouTube videos, send me DMs on Instagram, have conversations, and some of them have gone vegan now. Most of them eat vegan foods because they've seen a bit of my videos and weight loss into being super skinny because to be a pro cyclist, you've got to be really light. And so it's just grown from that. But if I carried on that social conditioning, oh, I'm not a just nutritionist, blah, 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 then how much would I miss out on in my life because of I entertain social conditioning? Oh, you're meant to have kids. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Everybody hates their job, Harley. You shouldn't find a job you love. Like, you know what I mean? Sit around with the first girl you're really attracted to and have kids and have a family and get a mortgage and all this social conditioning. And be, hey, if that's what you want to do, if that's what you're doing and it gives you joy, cool to you. Congratulations. But most people don't find joy in that, and I certainly didn't. So I had to listen to my own conditioning. I had to live on my own terms. And having a life where you live on your own terms, meaning every day I wake up, do whatever the fuck I want to do. Uh, whatever I want to do, I go and do that. That's the life I've created for myself. I didn't have rich parents. I didn't really get taught this stuff. A lot of this stuff just sort of discovered it. Being in the right place at the right time, having a desire to learn to have a better lifestyle desiring the ability to be able to live a life on my own terms and also help other people do that. Let's tell you another story. When I went to YouTube in uh, 2008, I was like, well, I haven't done study, I haven't done film school, I haven't done acting, I, haven't, I don't even know how to use a camera. You know, I, I had all these social conditioning rules and YouTube, I didn't even have to work, I was hoping to internet. I was like, ah, this is frustrating, this is pointless. But I had a friend, Kelly, who introduced me to YouTube back in 2006. She's like, you should do this. And I was like, oh. And then I remember freely saying, get, get on YouTube and stuff like that. And uh, I was like, I don't know how to upload a video. And I was just, I was like, I was, I had these little barriers, these little social conditioning barriers. And then I remember 
seeing a, a video by Matt Monarch where he used about 10 different plastic bags for one piece of durian and he just, he just ditched the plastic bags. I'm like, oh my God, I got so frustrated. I went out and bought a camera that day, a little $100 Pentax thing or whatever, and did my first video. I was too gutless to really say, talk about the plastic bags, but because I was scared of social conditioning. Well, you can't get on YouTube and share your opinion. Like, no one's doing that. Like, don't do that, Harley. Don't rock the boat. So I didn't listen to myself. I listened to the social conditioning. So if you go see my first ever video, hey, I'm eating pineapple in Thailand. Oh, awkward. Turn off. Boom, that's it. But I still uploaded it. That was the first video I did. But I was listening to social conditioning. I didn't say, hey, I'm in Thailand. Plastic bags fucking everywhere. They're in the ocean. They're suffocating turtles. Matt Monarch, you're a moron. Using all these plastic bags and pieces of durian. What are you doing? That was what my heart wanted to say. And that's what would help people. But I listened to social conditioning saying, hey, don't want to rock the boat. Another story is, as YouTube became a profession, I had a friend of mine uh, who was a professional photographer, you know, earning money from doing photography. Not, earning a bit, earning a, not much, but, you know, paying rent. And uh, I remember saying, I'm doing this YouTube thing. And he's like, oh, but did you make any money from that? I said, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm making a little bit of money. He goes, oh, you know, not to put you down, Harley, but you're not a, prof- you know, you're not a professional. You're not, you have never got any qualifications. And I was like, yeah, I guess. And then I remember later that night thinking, he's just fucking jealous, man. He's just jealous that he had to lose film school and photography shit and have a $5,000 camera to earn a couple hundred bucks a week or whatever. And I'm just coming along with my little shitty Pentax camera with no education, just sharing my opinions and making money from that. And he was saying, you know, YouTube is not really, it's sort of frowned upon in our industry of professionals. Vimeo is what you use. You know, but you got to have a good camera for Vimeo, Holly. And I mean, this, thing, this is so pretentious and so fucking fake. And that dude ended up becoming a bit of a hater. As I started making hundreds of thousands of dollars and paying cash from a house and traveling around the world, that dude became a bit of a hater. And I've got no hate towards him, but I can understand why he was jealous. Because he listened to the n- narrative of social conditioning. And I went like this to social conditioning. You know? And I still do that today. Harley, you're 42, you can't have a, a 19 or 21 year old girlfriend, you can't do that, you, you can't get a vasectomy, you gotta. All, all this social narrative, you, you see it in my comments in my videos sometimes. A lot of times I like delete comments like that because I don't want this social conditioning narrative in my little bubble of YouTube audience. So if I, if I think a comment's not gonna help someone, I'm like, see you later, see you later. It's very important to run your YouTube channel with the narrative you want your audience to have. And now some people manipulate that in a bad way, you know, but I want people to be educated and not confused. I want people to have the best experience on this, on this template because man, people are confused out there, aren't they? I was talking, had a conversation today with a a cyclist and, uh, you know, I was pulling a tree off the road and, uh, all the big winds and the gum trees just falling on the road. So I was pulling this branch off the road and she came past, she's like, oh, good work, good work, you know, and. And then I kept getting up the climb, and I eventually caught up to her, and I just had a bit of a chat, said, what you don't say, blah, blah, blah. You know, I just like to chat with people. And uh, we got in a conversation about nutrition. She's just come back from breast cancer. And I was like, oh, did you use a contraceptive pill? And she says, yeah, I did that. And there's apparently there's some links with breast cancer. I'm like, yeah, there is. She's like, oh, they didn't tell us. They didn't, the doctors didn't tell us that back in the day. And I'm like, no, they're not really going to tell you nothing. And so this person, you're very friendly, and we had a great conversation. And then... Uh, conversation about diet came up. She's like, oh, so your carbs aren't good though, are they? Like, you've got to clearly cut your carbs to lose weight. And I'm like, well, you know, like, you know, I basically told about social media and Tasha and all the gang and the crew. I said, you go and check these people out and you see how slim they are on a high carb diet compared to, you know, uh, a lot of cyclists who are overweight, you know, who do a lot of training but still can't battle the bulge because they're eating so much fat and you can't out-train a fatty diet. And then I use that example, I use the example of, you know, what's the leanest cultures on the planet, it's the Asians and Indians and Africans who eat a white rice diet, pretty much corn, refined product all day. And then once they marry a Western or get more money, they go Western foods, heaps of fat, more animal protein, and they, they puff right out. And so this, all these concepts and truths and realities made total sense to this lady. She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, it's just common sense. She says, yeah, right, it's just common sense. But I could tell she was very attached to the social conditioning she had because her trainer had said this or her doctor said that or the internet said this and this is keto and this is good and blah, 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 blah. She's like, well, they say that. I'm like, who is they? 
You know? And so be careful what they listen to, the social conditioning. You can't be a vegan. Years will fall off. Or you can be a vegan, but you can't eat sugar. You can't eat too much rice unless you run a marathon today. You know, all this social conditioning out there. Oh, if you're a vegan, you'll get a B12 deficiency. Anybody can have B12 deficiency. Everybody I coach never has a B12 deficiency. Ever. Because if you take it my advice, you'll never have B12 deficiency. Impossible. And not many people can say that. Not many coaches out there, people can say that. Because they're, they're listening to social conditioning. They're like, oh, I can't really recommend B12 injections because the social narrative says, this, this, this. you know? That's the reality. So you want, if you want to go down the social narrative, the status quo, worshipping the God of public opinion, then do that. But man, I checked off that ages ago. I checked off that conveyor belt. That's just a conveyor belt. Even today, me and Natasha run into Norwood to get some groceries on our bicycles. And we saw some cyclists waiting at a pedestrian crossing. You know, and good on them for riding bikes to and from work. Fantastic. There was no traffic. You know, it's totally safe to go across the road, but they're still waiting there for the green light to say, you can go. They're waiting for that social narrative, that social approval. You know, uh, it, it is crazy. And the stars and Natasha, did you see that? They all lined up. And I'm like, <laughs> what are they doing, man? They're waiting for other people to tell them what to do. Even in their head, they know common sense. Well, there's no cars coming. The light says, the little man on the thing says red. There's no cars coming. These are people who stop in the middle of nowhere to a red light on their bicycle. And they'd be like, waiting for 10, 20 minutes and going, should we run the red light? There's no one around. Well, Reynold, Rayana, <laughs> don't, don't do that because it's a red light. It's, you know, the social conditioning says we've got to stay here till it goes green. No one's thinking about safety. And then when they cross the road, they don't even look. They don't always look left and right. I don't care what colours the lights are. People run reds, man, and get in their cars. I don't just go, oh, this light's green. I just keep on little petting on a little bike or drive a little car. I'm like, left, right, boom, go across. I always do that. But you'll see people with pedestrian crossing on their phone, wait for a little beep, 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 do you? They just walk across the lights. Social conditioning. Social conditioning will get you killed. Or can get you killed, I should say. Can get you killed. Can get you messed up. In the meantime, it can really make you lose your life. You lose your lifestyle. Cycling world. Well, these black jerseys are in. Zip them right up. So it's like cutting into your thyroid gland. Oh, can't even breathe properly. This is so irritating. Oh, but Instagram says I've got to wear a cycling jersey. All the way zipped up. No gloves. If I crash, I rip my hands up. But that's okay. Because that's something I can put on the ground. So this is cycling, jerseys all the way in. It's, it's so fucking uncomfortable for most jerseys. This is me. Fuck social conditioning. Ah, oh, black jersey as well. Not the best safety color, but very trendy. Very trendy. So, you know, if I wear a black jersey, it's going to be a cold day, and I'm going to have some sort of neon helmet or neon socks so I can be seen because I don't care about social conditioning of looking cool in black or whatever. Black, I've, to be honest, I like black. It looks cool. They don't even save colour. And in summer, you, you generate a lot of heat. So that's why you see me run the, excuse me, run the neons, stuff like that. Even that, oh, man. But it's a social tradition we're out there. Just do this to have job security. What is job security? <laughs> what does that even mean? Your job's not secure. The government could change. The rules could change. YouTube, YouTube could change. Or, you know, someone accuses you of something at work. You're, you're gone. You know what I mean? You're gone. Some female employee gets a crush on you. You eject her or whatever. She's like, hey, rape me. You're gone. You know what I mean? Or some guy at work has a mad crush on you. He feels rejected, so he says that you stole something from work. Boom. Work, job security means fuck all. Things can change so quick. The rules can be flipped so quickly. You know, so don't go, well, I've got to do this because it's secure. Nothing's really secure. Nothing's really secure. Bitcoin. Gold. Shit can happen, man. Shit can happen. Anyway, don't live your life in fear of social conditioning. Go with common sense. Go with what your heart really tells you to do. Yeah? Just go with common sense, man. If, if being a plant eater makes sense to you, it makes sense to me. I'm like, you know what? I see these animals. And I used to like eating animals. Animals, you know, 
and a burger, it all sort of tasted good, but I had no drive to go and, you know, put a cockroach in my mouth, start chewing, or grab a fish in the ocean and start biting into it. I just, I don't know, I just didn't really feel that vibe, or, you know, crack open a, a chicken's egg from between its eggs and legs and eat it. it was, that wasn't my me doing that. That was social conditioning. I was giving fish and chips as a kid, or I had a Big Mac with my dad, my brothers at the movie cinemas, and watching Return of the Jedi in 1985, and have a Big Mac and a McDonald's strawberry thick shake, and it's, oh, it's got some sugar in there, gives me some energy, I feel good on this dopamine, yeah, this is good with my brothers and my dad, and Star Wars, yeah. And that's just learned behavior, then you start to go, McDonald's, Big Macs, so remember that time when I was eight? And it's just social conditioning. Meanwhile, heart disease, cancer risk, environmental destruction, all these things that happen because us humans, pack animals as we are, just follow social conditioning blindly, blindly. So my goal, my life goal, is to help you know rewrite social narrative, social conditioning, and make it to a, a better social conditioning. You know, environmentally conscious. Just, what are you eating? Just just thinking a bit. You know, not so much overthinking, but just go with common sense. A common sense social narrative. That's what I'm trying to push. And that's my life purpose, man. And it brings me joy every day. It gets me out of bed. Keeps me up late at night. It's just something I can do effortlessly for free. Whatever. It has made me a lot of money. It has made me a lot of amazing moments in my life. And I'm very grateful for that. But I think when you're living your purpose, everything just starts to click. And you also get massive challenges as well. Big tsunami come on. You'll be on your little pedestal of like, I'm living my life purpose. I'm following my own narrative. And then the universe will say, really now? All right, here's a, here's a tsunami. Here's a tsunami of, you know, a Norwegian stalker. Or here's a, an ex who has been rejected and wants to crush you. Or here's changes in rules or his this, you know, and all this that. And then you'll be like, whoa, hey, I wasn't expecting that. I'm just trying to help people out. I'm just trying to open up my heart and help people. With the <laughs> when you open your heart, the daggers will be like, whoosh, there's an open heart, stab it. Because in society, society, the, uh, the social conditioning is kindness, is weakness. Most people, even at a subconscious level, mistake kindness for weakness. You know, you can walk around town and say, hey, who needs money? Who's, who needs some help? And people are like, yeah, man, uh, I need some help, yeah. I need some help, you know? They'll get these Joey Carb strong, money strong eyes. Yeah, man, I need some help. Yeah, do like that, yeah. How can you help me come YouTube star, man? <laughs> yeah, mate, really? <laughs> you know, so you start to attract all these cracking crazy people out there who will just mistake kindness for weakness. And then once you open that heart or turn your back, it's like, whoosh, <laughs> the lines come out. So... Again, that can be a social narrative of like, okay, don't help people. People are fucked. Help the planet. You focus on helping animals, things like that, and then you'll you'll always be good. All right. So yeah, that's anyway. That's a little wrap up. Social conditioning. Are you trapped in your life, or living a lie, or whatever because of social conditioning? Or are you living your parents' conditioning? Or you living your friends' condition? Who you, you know you, you really value because they're giving some fantastic advice, but maybe that part of the advice ain't going to give you the direction. You know. So think about that. My mate Jade back in the day, God was a lifesaver for me. Gave me some really good influence and a fantastic, fantastic guy and just get me in the right direction. And I had a lot of guys back in the 90s, late 90s, to give me a lot of direction. But Todd and Brooksy and my mate Reedy, all those crew, you know, and many. I won't leave any names out, be here or not, but uh, Jonathan and just people who really inspired me. I was very you know, new to the that sort of scene cycling and so they took me on their wing and gave me some tips and that's what I do today as well is I'm very open with information and helping people and I'll, I'll give people advice or whatever even today I was up the top of Mount Lofty just to wrap, to wrap it up top of Mount Lofty and there's this guy he's riding his bike in a Cervelo you know aka made in China and uh, we tell you a lot of people I still have debates with some people like, oh, no my Cervelo is made in Canada this one's made in it's made by Carbo Tech in China mate in Dongguan City and that's fine. They're all made in China these days. But this guy had these, these uh, loud wheels. I'm like, well, that, that sounds pretty cool. So I went up and said, hey, what, what's sort of, is that a Bitex hub? And he's like, no, mate, it's Hunt. It's Japanese. It's, no, it's, it's a Bitex. It's Chinese, which is fine. And I was like, how much you pay for those wheels? He's like, about 1700 I was like, wow. They probably made it for like two or 300 bucks. I said, a pretty good markup. And he's like, are you, are you trying to put me down? I was like, no, it's just, 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 I know it's just speaking my mind. And this guy got really offended and just, just wrote off. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, so his social narrative is if someone tells him the truth, what they're thinking, he gets offended. 
you know. All I said was the wheels maybe would have cost two or three hundred bucks for them to, to manufacture, and there's a, a big markup on that, like a $1,500, 600 dollars markup. Some people got offended by that. So if you're a person who gets offended when people tell you the truth, or their, their truth, which could be the truth, take it lightly, all right? Take it lightly. That's what I've learned as well. Avoid taking things personally. Look at the attention behind things. Don't make assumptions. The four agreements. So, you know, all those things out there. Do always do your best. Don't make assumptions. Avoid th taking things personally. Always keep your word. So, that's the deal out there, all right? Just like, <laughs> I don't know, man. YouTube taught me a lot. It's, it's been a fucking blessing in disguise. I can't believe that I live in an era where you could be, you can make money doing this stuff. It's, it's insane. You know, I'm getting paid to do what I love. To, I'm getting paid to do what I do for free. Not on single time. That's, that's incredible. It's, it's outrageous. All because I refused to live by the social narrative. This is why I'm successful as well because most people get YouTube because they don't make money and blah, blah, blah. And that's fantastic. That's cool. It's a job for some. They don't, they don't really like it. They're like, oh, I'm going to make money. Uh, turn up and do it. Uh. And then the people get really depressed and burnt out of the fame and money. But uh, I started YouTube because I wanted to help people. You know, I was getting these emails. I'm like, was it, you know, this would be a lot better if I just sent someone a link of a video versus typing out an essay. I can just send them a link. And it feels a bit more real having a camera, you know, talking to someone. And so, uh, <laughs> again, I didn't send the social narrative. Social narrative is like, you can't give people information for free. I'm like, really, blah, 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 blah. I think you should give probably 95% of your stuff out there for free. You know? And people really value it on extra will support you and, and provide incredible value, incredible value, unbeatable value, and you'll be cared for. And, you know, I'm not out there to uh, overcharge people with pretentious, wanky stuff or whatever. Um, there's enough people doing that. I want to change that narrative. But we live in such a pretentious fake narcissistic world and a little bit of narcissism is cool but it's just it's fucking out of hand right now and social media is just gonna make it even worse so what be the change you want to see whose social narrative are you following is it yours is it common sense is it, is it a common sense narrative or is it a status quo narrative i still have that question am i at university now for status quo narrative status quo approval my parents approval or i am i at university or whatever because i really love doing this and just do that, man. Otherwise, life's short. You'll be dead tomorrow. You'll be dead today. You'll be dead by the end of this video.